Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyEyeMarketing.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up custom audiences in your Facebook or Meta Ads Manager. Now, a custom audience is a list of people that have interacted with your business in some way, shape, or form. And I'm gonna go through several examples in this video. But here we are in the Ads Manager, and we wanna to go to the Audiences area right here. And then you should come to a page that looks like this, unless you already have audiences, in which case you'll see a page that lists out all your audiences. Now, we're gonna be creating custom audiences in this video, and I'll have other videos on lookalike audiences and saved audiences, so links in the description down below if you're looking at those two audience types. But we're doing create a custom audience here. And so, like I said in the introduction, a custom audience is based off of people that have interacted with your business or your website or your business's Facebook page. So we have different sources here, like website, app activity, catalog, customer list, offline activity, video, lead form, Instagram account, Facebook page, etc. And we're gonna go through a few of these different options and I'll point out some different settings you can adjust in order to create these different audiences. So website, of course, is a very popular one. Now this is assuming that you've already installed a pixel or a data set on your website so that way you can track people and how they're interacting on your website, if they're opting in for lead magnets, if they're buying things, etc. So the website source is based off of your pixel or your conversion API. And if you haven't set that up yet, links in the description description down below on how to do that. We're gonna go ahead and click on next now. And we're just gonna go through this process together and I'll point out a few things along the way. So include accounts centered accounts. And that is a very confusing phrase right there, but basically it just means people. But for whatever reason, Meta decided to call it account center accounts because I guess it includes Instagram accounts and business accounts. And it's more than just people per se, instead it's accounts. But account centered accounts is very confusing. Anyway, you can think of it as people just to keep it simple. So who meet any or all of the following criteria? Now I do recommend keeping these custom audiences relatively broad, like don't get all fancy on trying to get like a super pinpoint audience or you're gonna make it super small and it's not gonna be very helpful to you. Additionally, when you're building your campaigns and setting up your ad sets, you can go ahead and select multiple custom audiences and you can create exclusions and stuff while you're doing your ad set. So if you really do wanna narrow down your audience, you can do it when you set up your ad set. And for custom audiences, my recommendation is to leave them kinda of broad, but a few audiences we probably wanna go ahead and do is go ahead and create one for all website visitors because this is everybody that's been on our website and we can use this to create a look like audience or for retargeting actions. And it's just a good audience to have. Up next we have retention. So this is how long somebody will stay in the custom audience. And depending on your marketing strategy and everything, this may change. But usually I'll have like a seven day, a 14 day, a 30 day, a 90 day, and a 180 day audience. That way I can do different things with them and try different things. So I'll go ahead and do seven days for this particular example. We can also include more people. And I'm gonna go ahead and click this option real quick. So we can select a different data source, for example, or a different event. However, all website visitors is pretty much everybody. So I don't know how much more broad you could really get. I could also select a retention for this or statement as well. I wanna go ahead and close out of here. And you could also exclude people too. So if you want to have everybody that visited your website, but then you wanna go ahead and exclude all your leads, for example, and you could go ahead and do something like this right here. So include, exclude all leads in the last 30 days. And then you'd have a list of people that have visited your website in the last seven days, but that aren't leads within the last 30 days. Now, like I said at the start, I don't recommend getting too narrow in these audiences because again, you can include or exclude people while you create your ad sets. And so I recommend doing that stuff at the ad set level and not at the audience level. Otherwise, these audiences may get too small. Or you may exclude people that you didn't mean to and it just, it just gets confusing. So I try and keep my audiences as simple as possible. And so I would name this all website visitors seven days and then create audience. And then I would come back in here, create audience, custom audience, and all the website visitors, 14 days. And then I do all site visitors, 14 days. And create audience. And done. And then 30, 60, 90, 180, etc. I think you get the idea at this point. Now another audience that I would go ahead and create, custom audience right here, website. Next. And in this case, I would go ahead and select all my leads. So now I'd go ahead and create a lead audience and I might have a longer retention at this point or depending on my marketing strategy and maybe my retargeting campaigns, I might have a different retention. But then this would be a list of all the people that have triggered my lead event. So then I would go ahead and have leads 
30 days and create audience. And so now when I create my campaign and ad set, I could go ahead and target all website visitors in the last seven days, but then exclude my leads in the last 30 days. I didn't have to create a special custom audience with fancy settings in order to do that. And then I would come back in here and custom audience. And then of course I would go ahead and set one up for purchases or buyers as well. So we'll come down and I haven't had any purchase events trigger on my website, so I can't select it. But I think you get the idea at this point. Again, the main point is to have a bunch of different audiences of different lengths for different events. And that way you can use them for retargeting and also look alike audiences. All right, I'm gonna close out of here. We'll go ahead and create a custom audience. So that's website and that's probably one of the more important sources for your audience. There's app activity, catalog, which I've not really used too much. There's customer list which right here, which can be very great. So this lets you upload an email list or a customer list from really anywhere. You can upload an Excel or a CSV file and you wanna contain personal information like email, phone number, first and last name, where they live, et cetera, as much information as possible. And when you upload that list, Facebook's gonna take that information and it's gonna look across all their users for matching information. And then it can associate your contact list with their Facebook and Instagram users. And it'll create the custom audience based Based off of your email list. So this can be very powerful if you have a list of customers already and it can help jumpstart your custom audience creation here on Facebook. So that's a very powerful and great feature. Let's come back into custom audiences and moving on there's offline activity as well. So if you have a physical location and you're uploading data into Facebook or Meta, you can go ahead and reference that data to create a custom audience as well. Then there's meta sources right here. And so I use video a lot in my ads. So let's go ahead and click into here and check it out real quick because there's some cool options. So we have engagement right here. So we can choose people that have watched three seconds, 10 seconds, at least 15 seconds of your video or 25, 50, 75, 95% of your video. So you can create audiences of people that are watching your content watching your ads. And like if somebody have watched 75% of a three minute video you have, you know that they're probably a hot target or lead that might be about to buy something that you have. And then you can go ahead and choose which videos you wanna go ahead and monitor for. So we can click into here. So there's Facebook page. So if you go to like your Facebook page and you have videos on your Facebook page, you can go ahead and select all the ones that you wanna go ahead and create this audience based off of. Also right here, if you have an Instagram account that has a video on it or you have an ad campaign that has videos on it that you wanna go ahead and use, you can go ahead and select this option as well. And once you've selected the appropriate videos, you could just go ahead and confirm here. And so with videos, the retention's upwards of 365 days, so a little bit longer than the other audience options, but 365 days is a pretty long time to remember if I watched a video or not. I can barely remember if I watch a two hour movie like three months later, so a three minute clip on Facebook, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna remember if I watch that or not. So 365 days seems pretty long. And I'd probably do something similar to my all website visitors audiences where I'd have like a seven, a 14, a 30, 60, 90, 180 day audience. Unless I'm running a specific advertising campaign and have specific retargeting set up that requires different days. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and name this audience now. So watched more than 75% of my video, seven days. So watch seven, Watch more than 75% of my video seven days. I'm gonna go ahead and create that audience and done. Now, one thing to note about the video audiences is if you create another new video and you need to come in here and you can go ahead and edit the audience, edit your videos and make sure that your new videos get added to your audience as well. So that way you're capturing those people too. And so that's just one thing to keep in mind if you're using video audiences is that you may need to come back in here and adjust them by adding the new video content that you're producing. So I'm gonna come back to create an audience and custom audience. Now another audience that can be useful if you're using lead forms for your ads would be the lead form custom audience. And we'll click into it real quick. And you can see that there's different options here. So like an event, so anyone who opened the form or anyone who opened but didn't submit it, who opened and submitted the form. So this is basically people that became leads right here through your lead form. And there's just different options depending on what type of audience you're trying to create. And the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna close out of here, create a new audience, custom audience. Another popular one is the Instagram account option. So we'll click on next here. So if you have an Instagram account, 
connected through your business manager, which I recommend doing. You could use it as one of your audience sources. And there's events, so everyone in, who engaged with this professional account or who started following this account or visited or engaged with any poster ad or who saved a poster ad. So a lot of different options and different ways to go ahead and create audiences, which I recommend doing, similar to the all website visitors audiences. So that way you can retarget people that have viewed your Instagram page and hopefully get them over to your website so they can go ahead and buy something. And finally, the last custom audience we'll talk about now is the Facebook page audience, which is quite similar to the Instagram account one. So again, you can go ahead and select your particular page that is relevant and then the events. So people who have engaged with your page or who like or follow your page or visited your page or who have clicked the call to action button on your page. So a lot of different options here. And I would use it similar to the all website visitors audience where I would go ahead and create audiences for people that have engaged with my page or visited my page in the last 7, 14, 30, 60, 90, 180 days because that's just a good general audience to have. And you never know when you might want to retarget it or create a lookalike audience based off of those individuals. And I'll close out of here. And that pretty much covers it for the custom audiences. Again, I recommend making a lot of these. I cover a lot of different scenarios, but don't make them too specific because you can go ahead and make them more specific when you're creating your campaigns and at the ad set level, when you're deciding on your audience, you can choose to include or exclude different audiences and people. So don't make these audiences too small and specific unless you have like an absolute need to do something like that. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. So likes, comment, subscribe, and or check out crazyartmarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.